It is that time of the year when a number of parents have to dig deeper into their pockets to meet the cost of education. The debate about regulating school fees has emerged over and over again. Should and can government regulate school fees? What needs to be done to improve quality and access to education? Last week, the Minister of State for Higher Education, John Crisesto Moyingo, said the sector had proposed a policy to regulate school fees, but this has been overtaken by events and Cabinet's decision to implement free and compulsory education as approved in March. However, the Initiative for Social and Economic Rights, AISA, contends that while some argue that parents should enroll their children in schools they can afford, the Ministry of Education should exercise its mandate to regulate school charges and ban some of the requirements as education is both a right and a public good. Uh, average, the average income for someone who is employed is 200,000 shillings. That means you're even just encouraging corruption. Eh? Because if that is the average income for Ugandan, 200,000, wh where are people getting 2 million to pay fees? Isa stressed the need to oversee government-aided schools which receive government support, yet they still impose high charges similar to private schools. So if you have government putting money in affluent schools, uh, paying their teachers, for instance, sometimes they pay their capitation, sometimes they meet capital costs, including constructing libraries and other things, and yet at the same time these uh, schools are charging exorbitant uh, fees, it means that... Uh, government is already spending on schools that are able to raise the funds to run their activities. So probably that money should be put in other schools that may not be able, the less affluent, especially the schools in the rural. However, the National Planning Authority cautions that in a free market economy, achieving such regulation might be challenging. So because the goals and visions and objectives of each education institution is different, you can't assume that they have similar unit costs. But also the unit costs differ by, for instance, the location of the education institution, the school or the university. These concerns were raised during the annual conference on economic, social and cultural rights in Uganda. Activists attending the meeting raised concerns about conflict of interest where some education institutions are owned by ministers in the education sector. With all the private schools he owns, how can he convince me and other Ugandans that he has the goodwill to be Minister of Education and preside over this ministry and ensure that government schools thrive and are successful, knowing full well that his own private schools are competing with his government schools. The National Planning Authority suggests that for free and high quality education to become a reality, the government must increase capitation grants to public schools and prioritize education more effectively. For instance, at primary, to increase from 20,000 shillings per student per year to about 63,000 and for lower secondary to increase from about 175 to about 53, um, 50, 500 and 530,000. Then for upper secondary, for instance, to cover those quality you know, improvements, then we need to increase from about 275 to 275,000 shillings to about 885,000 shillings. Many stakeholders, including parliamentarians, have repeatedly called on the government to regulate schools. The question now remains, will this call for regulation translate into action? <laughs> no, but at Kunda, in TV News.